to go to the back of the line, but I'd like, I'd like to have something. I don't want to go empty-handed. All right, it's Memorial Day, and so as I was looking through my Bible, the book of Exodus has got uh, several things there that, as Ronnie was talking about, for, for memorials, uh, there are, there are uh, several different memorials that God instituted in that book of Exodus. Now we have uh, uh, set aside, we, that's not right preacher, we have not set aside May the 30th. May the 30th is Memorial Day, is that right? But you know what, we're a holiday crazy country and we don't care about honoring our dead. We just want a three-day weekend. Yeah, so we changed it from May the 30th to, uh, to the, fir- the last Monday in May, right? So we could get a three-day weekend. In the mountains, we called it Decoration Day. Y'all remember they called it that. And they'd go and decorate the, the graves of family members or uh, remember days long gone by. And, but that, that instilled in us the, the, uh, the duty that we have to remember, amen, our family amen. and our soldiers. Now I want to talk about uh, uh, several Bible memorials today. But if you will, look in the book of Exodus chapter 28. And I want to talk about a, a uh, memorial that God uh, set up. A memorial that God set up. Exodus chapter 28. Start, we'll start reading at verse number 6. Exodus 28 verse number 6. And they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue, and of purple, of scarlet, and fine twine linen with cunning work. It shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof. And so it shall be joined together. And the curious girdle of the ephod which is upon it shall be of the same according to the work thereof even of gold, of blue, and of purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen. And thou shalt take two onyx stones and grave on them the names of the children of Israel, six of their names on one stone, and the other six names of the rest on the other stone, according to their birth, with the work of an engraver in stone. Like the engravings of a signet shalt thou engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in ashes of gold. And thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of a memorial unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, today we thank you for the privilege to pray. And today we thank you for the memories we have of our family, the memories we have of our time in the service of our country. And Lord, the people that have, some of them done gone on, our Father, I pray that we could keep their memory alive today. But Lord, the reason we're able to know and experience memory and love is because we're made in the image of God. And Father, you have told us in your word that you set the children of Israel on their stones on the shoulders of the high priest as a memorial. They could be remembered before God all the days of their life. Help us, Lord, as we look into this, this scripture that it might be our Father enlightening to our eyes. In Jesus' name, amen. Now on, on the high priest's clothing, carried on his shoulders, on each shoulder, he had woven into his garment the names of the 12 children 
of Israel engraved in stone. Now I want you to notice and please pay attention. There were no priests in Egypt. That is, there were none of God's priests in Egypt. There's a lot of priests, if you will, but there's the wrong kind. Just like there's a lot of preachers in the world that are the wrong kind. But the priests of God, they came along after the blood had been applied. Amen. Amen. The rituals of the priesthood are for believers. Amen. You know what Egyptians need? Egyptians, Israelites, if you will, in Egypt, they need they need a savior. They don't need a priest. They need a savior. They need somebody to deliver them from the bondage that they're in. They need that desperately. And if they don't get that, they will die under the yoke of Pharaoh's bondage. But after Israel got out of Egypt, after the blood was shed, amen, after the Red Sea was crossed and over in the wilderness land, then God said, hey, even my people need somebody to represent them to God. Even Christian people fail. Hello. Amen. Amen. It was a a picture of uh, the work of Jesus Christ bearing on their shoulders, bearing on the high priest's shoulders the names of the redeemed people. Hallelujah. I, I like that. I'm getting ready to preach here in a minute. It was a picture of Jesus. Now, it was, uh, people that get hung up on the Old Testament and all of the ceremonies and rituals, they, they would uh, rather have the picture as they would Jesus. I'm glad I've got Jesus. Amen. I'll show you a difference. I, it's today, tomorrow, whenever is the, do they run the uh, 500? Is it tomorrow or is it Memorial Day that they always run the Indianapolis 500. I don't know, and evidently we don't have any sports fans in here. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Okay, so, but would you rather have an opportunity to ride in a NASCAR, Dale Earnhardt Special, or would you rather have a picture of one hanging on the wall? See, the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Old Testament is a picture of, The New Testament is the real thing. And we've got a real high priest in the Lord Jesus Christ that ever lives to make intercession for us. He'll never fade away and he carries us with our names engraved on the stones in his shoulder. Amen. I think about that and the priesthood, like I said, it shows up after the blood's applied. It shows up after the Red Sea's crossed. And it's a provision for a saint. Of course, now there are people that claim to be saints that ain't. You know any ain't saints, saints? I mean, the the churches are full of people that ain't saints. Uh, the, The priesthood is only for the saints. But there were some guys in the Old Testament that thought that they could worship any way they wanted to. They thought they could do it the way that they described rather than the way God described. In fact, they were Aaron's boys. There were two of them, Nadab and Abihu. And they thought, hey, we can just live like hell, amen, and worship God, and God won't pay any attention to it. And that's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. They died for their transgression against the Lord, and they were replaced by Eleazar and Ithamar, real priests of God. But I want to say this. I don't want to get too far away from my subject here. We're talking about the, the memorial of the Stones on their shoulders. On his shoulders. Hey man, I read that some other place. Yeah, I, I read that about a sheep that had gone astray. And I read about the good shepherd that left the ninety and nine in the wilderness and went out and found that sheep that was lost. And when he found him, he picked him up and put him on his shoulders. And he came home with him on his shoulders saying, Rejoice with me. I found my sheep that was lost. Amen. So on the shoulders uh, is, the, is the, the place of strength for anybody. That's where the Lord has got us and His power has brought us to where we are today. 
We're kept by the power of God. Amen. We're kept on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. Found the sheep on his shoulders and, and every saint is placed there. And, and then I want you to notice it, it, it says that, that they were, help me find it, that they were engraved. Their names were engraved. It wasn't painted on. It was, amen, it was marked. Amen. People talk about, well, how the Christian get, get lost. I, I'm glad that my name is not painted on. I'm glad it's engraved. Amen. In the palms of his hands. I can show you that in the book. Amen. Where it said that he'd engraved our names in the palms of his hand. Written there with a graven tool. Every saint is placed there and our merit, good or bad, has nothing to do with it. Amen. 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 Now, now, you know, we, we throw stones at one another, and, but wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be something if God was only looking for worthy people? What kind of shape would you be in? What kind of shape would I be in if God was only interested in saving good people? Amen. He didn't come to save the good people. Good people don't need saved. But he came to save the sinner. And if we were if we were to do it, if we were to have salvation, it would be because of his strength and not our strength. Now, in order for you to get rid of me, you'd have to get rid of the prince. The engraving in his hands. Yeah. You remember they said whenever they looked at him and, and looking prophetically through, through to the future, they said, what are these wounds in your hands? And do you remember whenever they showed the, the Lamb of God on the throne and they said that he still had the marks Amen. of the slaughter Amen. in his body? Yeah. Are you listening to me? We as God's people are secure as long as those marks are there. Amen. Amen. If you can find some way of erasing those marks, they're there for a memorial, it said. For a memorial on the high priest's shoulders, we've got this memorial. Amen. Now look at verse 29. We've got a second memorial there, a repetition. But this time it's not only... On their show, it's not on his shoulders, but actually got little old chains that hang it the, down and they are on what we call the breastplate. The breastplate is connected by a gold chain, the divine love that God has for his church. Now, why do we have two of them? Well, let me, let me help you this way. God put six of them on one stone but on the breastplate, everybody got their own name on their own stone. And what I'm saying, God loves the church. He loves us as a group. But He also loves us as individuals. And our individuality is hooked to the fact that we're carried by His shoulders. The breastplate, we've got, we not only are on His shoulders, but we are in His heart. Amen. He loves us with all his heart. I am his and he is mine. Amen. Thank God that the Lord Jesus loves me with all his heart. What a memorial for us to celebrate. What's something for us to look about? Not like modern America who uh, uh, has no respect for nothing or anybody and changes their weekends around to accommodate their holidays. But the truth of the matter is that God has gave us memorials and because of His memorials, we're secure today. Amen. Now let me talk about something else. Another memorial that He set up, He set it up in the uh, uh, third chapter of, of Exodus, the 15th verse. I got a little close to Ronnie's Sunday School lesson, but I'll skip on through and you all forget it by the next week anyway. The third chapter of Exodus, the name of God is to be remembered. Amen. The name of God is to be remembered. And now, you hear the scholars, and the scholars, they'll say Yahweh, or they'll say Yehovah, or they'll, and then they'll say, well, we have lost the pronunciation of the name of God. What a disgrace. What a disgrace that we don't even know how to say His name. 
Amen. We've lost the name of God. And he said, I want you to keep that memorial through all generations that everybody would know who I am. I know who he's not. He's not Buddha and he's not Mohammed. Amen. I will give you a name, a brother that isn't lost. And it's a name that every knee going to bow and every tongue going to confess. And it's the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We may have lost the Old Testament name, but thank God we've got the New Testament name and that's Jesus our Savior. Moses asked for a specific name. He said, whenever, you, whenever I go into Egypt, they go ask, well, who sent me? Who authorized you? Just like they did John the Baptist. And, and he said, well, you tell them I am. I am sent me. Of course, I've taught you about when we see the Lord there in all capital letters, you need to look for whatever else accompanies that. For instance, like in Psalm 23, it said, the Lord but then it said, is my shepherd. You see, there's an adjective to his name. Yeah. Amen. The Lord is my healer. The Lord is my righteousness. Yeah. That just goes on. I am. Uh, 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 not I was. Not I'm going to be. Not I used to be and ain't anymore. Or not I'm going to be in the future. But I am right now. I am now just like I was before the foundation of the world. Just like I'll be, amen, after this whole world has passed away. I am Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. One of the greatest revelations of history is that our God is an existent God that knows exactly what's going on in our life. Jesus applies the words I am to himself. They came to arrest him and, and he said, Whom seek ye? And, and they said, Well, uh, uh, they, they gave him some kind of an answer and, and he said, Well, I'm he. Man, backwards they went just like Benny Henny hit them. You know what I'm talking about? Down they fell in a line up. They hit the ground because of the very fact that Jesus Christ said, I am. He said, Before Abraham was, I am. He said, I am the shepherd of the sheep. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Samaritan woman said, I know that the Messiah is coming. And he said, I that speak to thee am he. When he speaks the words in the garden, his arresters fell on the ground. It's been said those words are a blank check to take care of our every need. I am whatever you need. If you need forgiveness, I'll forgive you. If you need salvation, I'll give you salvation. If you're hungry and you need food, I'll give you food. If you're naked and need clothes, I'll put clothes on your back. Whatever you need. Amen. He's gave me a house. He's gave me a food. He's gave me clothing. He's gave me a car. He's gave me a truck. He's gave me a family. He's gave me a church. I am whatever I need. He said, I am your supply. I'll supply your every need according to my riches in glory. Those who misunderstand uh, the word say uh, that it's the greatest but the word uh, or the name but the word is above all his name. Uh, The first remembrance should be the name of the Lord. First memorial we should always remember who God is. Then, Then in the Exodus chapter 12 verse 14 we've got that about the redemption by the blood. And he said, this is going to be a memorial for you. The Passover was going to be a memorial. When God sent the plagues, he made a difference between the Israeli cattle and the Egyptian cattle. Amen. Whenever the lights went out in Egypt, the lights was on in Goshen. Amen. Whenever the flies came down there to ruin their Memorial Day picnic, there wasn't any flies on the hot dogs. Amen. Over in Goshen's land, on the cakes and on the pies and on the cookies and on the potato salad and on the potato chips and the ice creams. No flies in Goshen, according to Exodus chapter 8. I'm saying God is the one that gives us these memorials. But the death angel, the night the death angel came through, he made no difference between whether you was a church member or whether you was a heathen. What he was looking for was the blood on the plot. It didn't matter if he was from the white house or the poor house. <laughs> white house or the black house. 
The only escape was the blood on the door. It's the only escape we had. The Passover is the anathema to the Jewish religion today. The Jews can't even keep their own religion. It demands that they have that temple sacrifice. It demands that they have that Passover. Amen. They either accept the blood of Jesus or admit that they're cursed of God. One of the two. Now, y'all remember several years ago now, several, several years ago, I had a, a Jewish missionary in here and he explained the Passover supper. You remember what he said? He had that horseradish or whatever that junk was he fed me, but it was bitter. And whenever I took a bite of it, it didn't take me long to say, well, I've got enough of those bitter herbs. He wanted, he wanted you to be reminded of how bitter the bondage is in Egypt. He wants you to be reminded of that. And then if you remember, he said the man of the house would take a piece of leaven, put it up over the window somewhere. Yeah. You remember? And they'd go looking through the house yeah. to see if they could find any leaven. Yeah. Do you know what? Let, listen to me, church. Come here, let, Look up here at me. You know, you know what leaven's a symbol of? A leaven is a symbol of wickedness. Yeah. It's a symbol of evil. And he said... Whenever they'd find that leaven, they'd say, I got it. And they'd put it out of their house. Are you listening to me? I'm telling you, you need to make an inspection of your life. You need to see if there's any wickedness that you can do something about. Amen. Amen. And it's up to you. It's up to you to put that leaven out of your life. It's up to me as a pastor to put it out of this church. But it's up to you. And I'm I'm just trying to tell you what you need. You need to get rid of it before it gets you. Just like Ronnie taught in the Sunday school lesson, it's going to get you. Help me. How many times have I stood behind this pulpit? How many times have I told you this? Give me those three things. What will it do? Sin. Amen. It'll keep you longer than you wanted to stay. Sin. It'll cost you more than you wanted to pay. Sin. Take you further further than you wanted to go. You see, we think I'm just going to monkey with it a little bit. I always thought about that school's out, school's out, and the teacher let the monkeys out. And and, and I thought, my teacher ain't got no monkeys. I never could figure that out, what they were talking about until I got to be grown. And then I realized it wasn't talking about monkeys, it's talking about me. It's talking about letting me out of school. And what I'm saying to you, I'm not talking about your neighbor, I'm talking about you. And you need to get the leaven out of your life before it blows up and kills you and destroys everything you have. You need to do it. I think that's all I need to preach on that. <laughs> I got one amen. amen. He had another memorial. Have y'all got time to listen to a couple yeah. more? When Amalek come up, he come up and he, he jumped up on the, on the back people, the, the people uh, sitting on the back row. Uh, amen. amen. I, I guess he'd get John first of all sitting there, but then John's busy, so he's a rear guard. Maybe it wouldn't bother him. But Amalek was the grandson of Esau, the man who we know sold his birthright. Christians are schizophrenic. Did you know that? All Christians are schizophrenic. There are two of us. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I talk to him. Amen. There's two of us. There's a new man that wants to love God and serve God and never do anything wrong with God. And then there's a flesh. What you can do is just peel right there between your your thumb and and your uh, index finger. And if you feel something there, then that means you got it too. Yeah. Right? It's flesh. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And it'll never get any better until that day that Jesus gives us a brand new body. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. I'm going to get a body that can. But until then, this old flesh is it's, it's weak. And Amalek, he, he seizes on the idea that it's weak. And he comes up and jumps on him. The apostle Paul said, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. We must not make allowance. We must not make provision. We must not give opportunity to the flesh or it'll get us. It'll get you. It'll get me. 
Amen. It'll get the deacon. It'll get the choir director. Amen. Amen. It'll get the backslider. It'll get the front slider. It'll get the whole crowd if we don't realize and make provision to get the living out of our life. John 3, 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's why the preacher runs off with the secretary. Amen. That's who does it? That super nice preacher, that dedicated Christian mother who forgets about the war with Amalek and gets hooked up in that thing. The next thing you know, they're looking for happiness and they, find, they, they destroy every bit of happiness they could ever have thinking that they're going to find it. That's the way the devil operates, sir. Remember the battle where Moses' hands got tired? Yeah. That was with Amalek. Yeah. And we need to hold each other's hands Amen. up when we get in that battle. They snuck up behind them, caught those that were weary, attacked you from behind, yeah. dwells in the valley. Yeah. Am I telling it right? Amen. Amen. You ever yeah. notice him? Amen. Uh, never underestimate him. Yeah. Haman was an Agagite. Uh-huh. Agag was a child of Amalek. Yeah. First Samuel 15, 9. He said, oh, oh, Saul spared Agag, the best of the cattle, and the best of the sheep. Now, let me tell you something. The devil ain't got no good cattle. The devil ain't got no good sheep. He just puts that picture out there to where you think that Sodom is the place that you'd like to live. You think that that's well watered and everything, and it, but it's up there. You seen that Venus flytrap work? Hey man, it's all uh, got its little old mouth open there, and just, just you're so inviting that fly gets in there, clamp. Yeah, amen. 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 Please run before you get clamped. Yes, amen. Hey, Gag will say, you probably can go to church, but you, you ought to hang on to a few things. Don't let that preacher talk you out of your ACDC records. You paid good money for them. Hey, Amen. That bottle of Budweiser in your refrigerator is a centennial bottle. That'll be worth money someday. Is that the way he operates? God swore a constant war with Amalek. And if you live after the flesh, Romans 8, 13, you'll die. And then, as I said, and I'm, I'm, I'm quitting, or, or at least I'm slowing down. The high priest was a memorial. He took our names before the Lord. That's what he did. Jesus is our high priest. The reason we preach our eternal salvation is not because we deserve it, but because we've got a priest that ever lives to make intercession for us. John 17 is the Lord's Prayer. Not to be confused with the model prayer of Matthew chapter 6. John 17 is the longest prayer in the Gospels uh, and it's in respect of two of them in respect of self, two or seven of them in respect of other people. Five in respect, and, and as Jesus prayed there, he prayed concerning himself that he'd get the glory that he had with God before the world was. Hello. Amen. He had a glory with the Father before you were ever born, yeah. before the world ever was. Verse 5, he had a specific glory that, that which he had from the foundation of the world. But now he's going to get that glory not as, not as the Son of God, but as the Son of Man. Yeah. You see, he always had it as the Son of God. Don't worry about whether he's the son of God. He had glory before the world was. But now he took a body of flesh just like you and I and did the same thing the son of God would do as the son of man. Amen. We've got a man in the glory land today that's making intercession for us. And he said, I pray for him. I pray you keep him from the evil. Not from evil, but the evil. There is one plan that the devil has and that plan is to destroy you. That's the only reason he comes. He'll offer you all kinds of things but his plan is to destroy you. If you're lost, he'll destroy you. He'll put you in hell. If you're a Christian, he'll destroy your testimony, get you to sin and sin unto death and God will take you out of here early. That's, That's his plan. Now, Jesus addressed old Simon Peter as an old man and uh, he, Peter said I, I, won't do, I won't do what you're saying preacher he said yeah you will yeah. And before the cock crows three times yeah. you do it yeah. Amen. I've had people tell me preacher I wouldn't do that I wouldn't never do that I wouldn't get mad at you preacher I wouldn't, t- I wouldn't talk about you preacher I wouldn't leave your church the devil himself couldn't get me out of this church 
crows. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will, before the cock crows. 1717, he prays for our sanctification, identifies the tool that will sanctify us as the Word of God. Now, when I worked in the coal mines, uh, uh, sometimes they'd have what they call a shaker. You know what a shaker would do? Amen. Some of you coal miners know what it would do. They would drop that coal on that, on that shaker and, blah, 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 and it had a screen on there, yeah. right? Yeah. And... Am I tell it right? The, the purpose of that screen was to let the good stuff go through and keep the bad stuff out. Yeah, amen. Hello. Amen. You know what this is? You know what preaching is? Amen. Preaching's a shaker. Amen. amen. Whenever you preach the book of God, the idea, amen, is to let the good stuff through and the bad stuff get it out and put it in the God pile somewhere. That's what we need to do. We need to get everything that's good and incorporate it in our life and gob the rest of it. Amen. I don't care if you get your cable going down the back entry, you gob that turkey. Amen. <laughs> well, that's enough coal mining for rest of my life. Jesus prayed for our unity as a church and God is over all and He can uh, supervise beyond Satan's schemes. And it's good that even though we're just going like little old sheep to the slaughter, God says, hold it, hold it, hold it. I, I'm going to send you a preacher. Amen. The preacher's going to tell you, amen, then, then you're going to have to make your decision. Church is fighting with themselves. Church splits, pastor firings, pastor dictators, church members who think they own the church. Amen. Must try the grace of our high priest. Amen. They must really get on his, but he's faithful. And he said, I'll not leave you. And he said that he prays for us. And he prays that we'd all be as one even as he is one. Memorials on Memorial Day. I think God's name ought to be remembered. I think God's redemption ought to be remembered. Amen. I think we ought to remember that we're all weak and need to fight the flesh. Then I think we need to remember that the Lamb of God is our high priest, carries us on his shoulders Amen. and carries us on his heart. Let's bow today. Thankful today for those that...